Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. Okay, now welcome back once again. And now this is the utilization of local material. You know, this is your fine and applied art, cultural and creative arts, visual art or fine art. And we're still looking at the utilization of local materials. Since we're talking about local materials, we're talking about different skills, different uh, professions, different obligations that, uh, that, 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 that makes use of local materials to create out useful you know, objects. So today is the part three. We'll be looking at the part three, you know, the continuity of um, the previous two parts that we've done, and then before we do the final part of it. All right. OK. So. Let's get started. Now, the objective. Now, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to define calabash and calabash decoration. You should know the materials and tools for calabash decoration. You know the location of calabash, and then you know the uses of calabash. Now, number the next thing you should know, again, we are going to look at another um, um, skill, which is known as the black smithing. The blacksmithing. Now you'll be able to explain the meaning or the definition of what blacksmithing. You should be able to state the types of blacksmithing and then be able to describe the different material for blacksmithing and the procedures that are involved in blind smithing. All right, before any further, let's just dive into the main thing of the day. Now, calabash. Now, calabash grow as guard freely in our villages. Now, guards are fruits of plants, not very much different from your cucumber. And all of us, we know the cucumber, right? So the calabash is not far different from the cucumber. And your, there's what we call the melon, the watermelon, or even the egusi. Yes, we call it egusi or, or melon. Now they look alike, they're in the same family. Now it grows out of what rubbish herbs at the what basket of the village. Now we don't really pay attention to it, but yet it is a resourceful and very, you know, attractive uh, um, plant. That can actually generate a lot of wealth. Now they are rarely grown as an economic crop, which is very wrong, because it should be grown as an economic crop. Now they are in varieties, especially in shapes, sizes, and even forms. Now that is a basic explanation or definition of the word calabash. Now you see, you see how beautiful it looks. Now those are decorated calabash and finished calabash. Now these things look very, very, very good, eco-friendly. You know water resistant and then it lasts it, it stays so far as you didn't break it it's just like your glass plate or your glass cups so that's exactly how they can and very light it's not that heavy it's very light now when fully ripe the guard changes color like mango from green to yellow as in but this time around it changes to yellow ochre and then it's being picked up and converted into what to use now the bigger the word or the guard they are called the bigger the calabash. Now, the bigger guards they are usually called the calabash. Now, after treatment, because you cannot just pick the calabash and then you start using them, it undergoes some several treatments. Now, when you get the calabash, you have to scope it, get the calabash, you have to cut it off, you scope the inside, and then allow it to dry because it needs plenty of sun help during the drying and transformation from the seed to the calabash without much what hazard. All right, so now this is. Um, a lady taking making uh, making you uh, making you know the fresh calabash into plates and uh, household utensils you see you, you see how the color looked but by the time they leave it to dry usually it's usually green most times not most times it's usually green so but, but by the time it undergoes the processes and then it changes color to the real color like yellow ochre 
or yellow or bounced umber or brown, depending on the nature of the calabash. Now, what is the location or where is this calabash found? Now, calabash carving are located traditionally and socially in various communities, towns and villages and cities in Nigeria. Now, some particular places are that are very popular with this craft include Let's look at some particular places that, that, that are very popular with this craft. They include the Yoruba speaking areas, like for example, the Oyo in Akashan and Ishii town, both in Oyo state, are notable for what? They are notable for calabash and calabash carving. Other places include the Igbo of Imo state, we have the Abia state, we have the Anambra state, we have the Bibio of the Cross River state. Now, these places also grow this product, this calabash product. They grow them and they make use of them. Now, this is a lady making an intricate design on the calabash. You see how interesting and how beautiful that carving is. Look at the time it takes and the, 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 the creative ingenuity. See how skillful and how sharp those lines are. So, that is exactly how the calabash, you know, looks like and what the calabash kind of can actually come out to be. That is, we have the right tools to carve on them. Now the Fulani, the Buri, the Yuga and the Bata area of the northern states, even in Sokoto, in Kanu, in Jigawa, in Kwara. Now all those places also practice calabash carving. Interestingly, this calabash grows in those places. Now this craft is popular also in some other African countries like the Benin Republic, in Ghana, in Togo, even in Chad, even in Equatoria, Guinea, in Africa. All those places they also grow the crop and they also practice calabash decoration and calabash you know marketing so this is a simple market of the calabash now let's look at the tools for calabash decoration now the tools for working or decorating on calabash are simple and they are small they are few and they are easy to even fashion them now they include engraved they include engraved and decoration tools which is the jabal a multiple purpose needle and what the ordinary verbal of what iron poker are also what used. Also, variety of dyes and simple carving and engraving tools are also used. Like your chisel, you need your mallet, you need your you need your mallet, you know, for harder parts of what the calabash that you want to create those interesting design. So that is now if you watch, is somebody creating a relief kind of bed on the calabash at the back of the calabash this calabash look as if it's still very fresh it's not um, yet um, you know dried as the normal regular color that's why it's coloring like that so now after carving on calabash they they, they make they, they they make their time you know to 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 dry it and they finish it now what do i mean by finishing now finishing is the act of polishing the surface of a carved object it could be a plant it could be wood it could be anything so that finishing gives it the holistic the holistic look and that's that that punch that sharpness to make it what attractive so whenever you're doing anything just bear at the back of your mind that the finishing sells the product so imagine if you're going to buy a coca-cola and then they ask you they pour it in a nylon bag and they give it to you would you go there to buy it again the next time no you won't but coca-cola they took their time and then they produced their bottle make the bottle to look very attractive and interesting so when you're taking it you're you're comfortable and you're feeling confident in what you are doing all right so decorating calabash now the cortical or outer skin of the calabash could be scraped before decorating now you could scrape the outer um, cortical of the calabash before you actually start your decoration it could be left alone that is depending on what you want to do now each creates its own effect whether you scrape it or you leave it like that each of them have their own what effect in your decoration and what you have at the back of your mind in decorating now designs on calabash are determined by the shape of the calabash now the calabash will drive your design because there are some calabash that are like you know uh, glass cup and some are bent and some have different shape so that will actually um, advise the kind of design that comes on it now this could be intricate it could be geometrical it could be abstract it could be natural in form the, it could be anything it could be any kind of design that you want to roll on the surface 
of the calabash. Now, they also include bold and simple pieces like fonts and, you know, the Arabic fonts. Sometimes people write on the calabash, you know, just to create variety. Now, the calabash could be planted in any, could be painted rather, in any color before the pattern are formed on it. Now, if you want to save yourself stress, as in you want to get variety of, uh, you know, grades in your calabash you can actually do your design as you can actually paint it before you start the engraving that is if you're going with the engraving method of what decoration so that is one thing you should put at the back of your mind when producing or when decorating your calabash all right now the pattern can be incised into the calabash with knife that is designed for this particular purpose you cannot just pick any random knife and then want to use it for for that no, it will, it will either stress you or you will, you know, not get the desired shape. That is why I advise you to use the right tools with the right object to get the desired result. Now, to get the desired result. Now, this is known as what? Engraving. That is, if you're carving on the calabash, it is known as what? Engraving. Areas could be scraped, leaving some other patterns left as in relieved like that. Why some will be what? Carved in. Now, patterns could be incised with hot iron which is a form of what scorching or burning now you can use hot iron like this uh, uh, sodium iron for those of you that know these um, electricians that repairs radio now there's what they call sodium iron now we can use that to create incised burning on the calabash and it comes out it comes out very very loud so this is exactly what i'm trying to explain now if you see the man, he has actually polished the calabash and now he's taking his time to make his, you know, detailed design and his intricate design. See how beautiful and how sharp and how clean the calabash looks. So he will take his time and make those drawings and then after, sometimes he might choose to use engraving, sometimes he might choose to use the painting method. Everything depends on what he wants to achieve. Now let's look at the uses and the functions of calabash. Now, carved, painted, or decorated calabashes function in various ways, which include number one, they are used as part of what domestic home utensils or utility for food, like boils, tray, drinking cup, flax for water, palm wine cup, milk cover, you know, um, concussion container, as fragile as these objects may appear. Now, they, 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 they use them, you know, to preserve their gare. Now, people around the Federal Capital Territory, as in Abuja, do carry big loads like firewood, you know, on calabash, you know, you know to maybe they, they, they use them to, to transport some of their, 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 uh, their food, you know, the hawk with it, you know, placing such, even placing some of them on their shoulder if they are going to sell. Now, this is a marketer that produces and sells calabash. You see how she positioned the stents and then she makes money out of it. All right. Extraneous materials like cowries, shells, beads, seeds, or coin are sometimes used toward as decorate as decoration and tools on calabash for special spiritual and ceremonial purposes. Now, sometimes they use this calabash to carry some of all these, you know, cowries, shells, bones, seeds, or even coin. You know, they use them, they use the calabash to store them and to carry them. Some musical instruments are made through this process too. Now, some mus musical, uh, musical instruments are made out of calabash. For example, the sakari, the rattle among the Yoruba, and the goji, as in a violin among the houses they use calabash to create violin to create some of these things that they you know they use to entertain themselves now in fulani marriage is not complete without the presentation of decorated calabash to the bride now no matter what you do if you did not present a decorated calabash to the bride then that marriage is never complete that is for the fulani people now, we have the rawa the buri dancers from ninja and kaduna state that carries decorated calabash boils on their head while they dance now some culture some other culture or cultural groups in the northern part of nigeria has calabash as part of their costumes you know when they are dancing or when they are doing one thing 
or the other. So the use of calabash cannot be overemphasized. Now, so calabash serves as gifts, even as souvenir for celebrants of important occasions like wedding, birthday, and other festival periods. And other festival what period. Now it's also used as what a decoration for our living room. Yes, as a living room. Some of them we use it as lamp stand, you know, reading lamp to mention but a few. Now reception halls ETC by hanging them on the wall and on the corner or by placing them at suspicious or compicious uh, uh, locations. Now, because of the way it looks, it comes out very loud and very nice. So some people like to keep it. You better will see it and what adore and adore it. Now, calabash also form part of what costume for masquerade dance in some part of what African community. Now, this is a beautiful decorated calabash that is placed. You know. Now, the next craft we're going to look at in this section is known as what the blind smith. The blind smith. The blank smith. Now, the blank smith. Now, this craft of blank smith is traditional, and the people take pride or place as what a blank smith. Now, in you know, in the Asian days, or not just in the Asian days, some few years ago, if you're a blank smith, they see you, they value you as a as a doctor. You know, they value you as a doctor, as somebody in the society. It is not just. Um, a simple craft because it requires wisdom and a high level of what technical practice now uh, um, a high level of technical practice now people take pride or place as blacksmiths within the community where it is being practiced such men sometimes play other social religious and even political roles among their people now this is exact the the, the exact um, sample or picture of a blank smith you know they heat iron up to the extent that the irons are red hot and then they he beats them to the desired shape that they desire now this they, they, they serve as village priests for some gods or deities that is associated with what iron for example the ogun which is the god of iron among the yoruba swearing before ogun at the blank smith workshop when an offense is committed is as effective as doing so at the shrine itself. So if you swear in front of the Ogun, is as effective and in front of a blank smith is as effective as when you're swearing in front of what the Ogun shrine. Because as the name implies, Ogun, which is what God of iron. So blank smith, they are seen as priests because of their ability to manipulate iron. Now the discovery of iron changed the life of the early men. Man has learned how to smith iron and then use it in producing useful equipment for his use. A man who manufactures or pro manufactures products from iron or steel is called a blindsmith. So whenever they ask you who is a blindsmith, a blindsmith is a man or anybody that manufactures product from iron. So this is a blindsmith. You see how he's trying to manufacture, he's bending that iron and trying to create something. Out of it now what is the definition of blind smith now blind smith this is the act or a person that has learned to smith iron and use it in producing useful equipment such as gun knife spoon to mention but a few all right so blind smith is a person that has learned the act of smithing iron or bending iron or making iron into any useful equipment all right now let's look at the tools and material that are needed for a blank smith number one his basic material and tools are one fire we have charcoal we have the avail we have the tongue we have the skin blower and then we have the hammer so these are the tools that are needed for a blank smith now if you watch <laughs> that is uh, some of the the tools that uh, the blank smiths use you know in creating some of his works you see that world different shapes and different sizes of um, you know object that is created by the blacksmith all right now let's look at the production of a blacksmith or the products of a blacksmith products of blacksmithing covers a wide range of items and they include farm implements household utensils ornaments musical instruments religion or religious objects ding guns and bullets to mention, they are, you can go on and on. Anything that relates to iron is related to what? To a blank smith. So they make all these things with their bare hands. Now, those that are vast make worth iron gates. 
So for those of them that are, you know, vast in the in the technology, they make even wide gates and other bigger objects with metal. Now, looking at the screen, you see some intricate, beautiful candle stand and artworks. All those are carved out from what? From me metal. And that's the handwork of a blacksmith. Blacksmithing is usually hereditary. It is between the father and the son and the apprenticeship. It is usually between two and what eight years learning period. So for you to be a good blacksmith, you would have practiced the act for like eight years before you master. So most times it is hereditary. Like the father will transfer the, the skill to the son, the son transfer to the grandson, and then they transfer it down to ages time. So it is mainly hereditary. Now this is a beautiful work of a blacksmith. See the intricate design, how he could be able to, how he was able to bend the iron, you know, to form that iron gate, you know, the iron bar and all that. So that is that, including this. So now another beautiful design from a blacksmith. Okay. Now, having said all this, let's do a quick rundown of what we've learned so far. In the course of the study, we talked about the calabash decoration. We discussed a lot about calabash, the process of making calabash, how to sell calabash, and then how to decorate calabash, the uses of calabash. Also went further to in detail to talk about the meaning of blacksmithing. We talked about we state the types of blacksmithing and then we describe the different materials for blacksmithing and then some of the things the blacksmith produced in the course of the study. So as we sit back in our next study, we are going to look in depth on how we can manipulate the leather and then the materials and tools for leather work. We are going to look at the uses of leather and we also define embroidering and then the types of stitching in our subsequent class. So sit further, I will sit tight as we verge into the second class. But meanwhile, let me try our knowledge based on what we have learned so far. Now, number one question I want to ask you, I want to ask you to define blanksmithing. What do you understand by the word blanksmith? Yes. It is a person, or is an art, or a person that have learned the art of what smithing metals, you know, into a desired shape. Can you give me two tools that is used by a blanksmith? Mention two tools or implements that is being used by a blanksmith. All right, did you say hammer? Did you say furnace? Did you say blowing skin? To mention but a few. Okay, those are sound. So thank you very much for sitting back. So now let's go try our hands on the exam guide where we'll see how far we've gone. All right, we are on the world of, you know, exam guide. We will try our knowledge based on what we've learned so far. So if you're familiar with this, by now you should know what to do. That we just finished cultural and creative arts. So click on it and then we'll go straight to random questions. Click on random, get it checked. And then you select topic that is related to what we've learned. We're talking about craft. We've been dealing about craft, utilization of local craft and local materials. We'll talk about crocheting. And then we went further, we we'll also discuss also discuss leather work in a subsequent class and then finally we talked about weaving so all that will get all that checked and then we'll click on ok and then let's get started all right all right now which of the following is not a local craft question eight let's try that which of the following is not a local craft a batik b cane work c calabash carving d new sign and then e I and I. The answer is D. Okay, now let's try the next question. Now, calabash decoration is popular to dash. Calabash decoration is popular to dash. A, is it a biokuta? B, is it akure? C, is it oshobo? D, is it owo? And E, is it oyo? So, where exactly is calabash practice? Is it akure? Is it a biokuta? If you say oh you, you're very correct. All right, now let's see the final question. A wooden structure used by the traditional weaver is known as dash. Beautiful. A wooden structure that is used by a traditional weaver is known as dash. A is it donkey? B is it easel? C is it kill? And D is it loom? E is it wheel? What do you think the answer is? Okay, if you say loom, that is the correct answer for this question thank you for participating in today's class 
you can practice more questions using the exam guide. Now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also have other features that make learning fun. Now it is a must have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you and bye-bye.